So hello everybody, thank you again for um, watching our video and we're joined today by Marie Bowers and I'll let Marie introduce herself and yeah, just really excited to have her and to talk about our partnership and things we're going to do with Epic, but also maybe a little bit about what we do and who we are and where we're from and yeah, just ex really happy to have her here today. So hi, hi Marie. Thanks very much. Um, so um, I'm Marie Bowers. Uh, I am a technician supporting the teaching of physiology to undergraduates at the University of Glasgow. Um, I'm also a PhD candidate at the University of Aberdeen, um, looking at uh, Gypsy Roma Traveller Showman and Boater access to medical and STEM education. And um, I also set up a small outreach project called Science Travels, where I'm looking to increase representation of the various communities within science and to raise their visibility. And um, yeah, just hoping to work more closely with EPIC and see if we can um, maybe hear more diverse voices in science that aren't generally included in any of the conversations. Brilliant. Um, and why is that important, would you say? To, to have that inclusivity and like for that those communities as well because as we know the multiple communities within that gtrsb yep so i just think it's important to hear as many voices as possible within science um the most creative um academic teams that i've ever worked with have been hugely diverse um but if you mention um has anyone thought about gypsies or travelers in this conversation has anyone recruited any um they tend to get sort of blank faces because we are you know reasonably small in number but we aren't often included in the equity diversity and inclusion conversations so it's just almost educating within our institutions and edu educating outside um to say that we are here um i know lots of gtrsb scientists um very few of them will identify as such within their institutions and it's just raising awareness that inclusion is inclusion for all not inclusion for certain groups above others amazing and why, why do you think they tend not to sort of self-disclose or have who they are be part of their work so i've had some really quite interesting conversations um actually with some romany students from england um who were part of our um our undergraduate STEM courses um, in Glasgow. So I have a really supportive academic um, in the school and they had um, asked me to talk in a science communication session about science travels. And um, somebody came up to me afterwards and said, um, oh, I'm Romani, this is brilliant. And I went, oh, do you want to come and join in? No, I don't tell anyone. And so there is, I think, a prevailing idea that if you identify as a member of those communities, that in somehow that's going to be detrimental to your academic career. And that's one of the barriers that I actually want to try and break down is this idea that anybody can be a scientist. I mean, geez, if I made it to work at the bench for 20 years, then um, anybody can work at the bench. So this idea that you somehow identify yourself to be somebody who possibly could through their ethnicity create a barrier to their career pro progression is something that I find one quite interesting but also two um, really disappointing in the fact that um, if you deny yourself um, through your ethnicity then you're also denying your creativity when it comes to your job or what you could bring to that job through your different viewpoint and so I think if we are truly wanting equity in our institutions, then every voice needs to be recognised and we need a lot more chairs around the table to have those discussions. Brilliant. And so what would you, if you were to sell STEM as a job, and I know that that's, again, it's one of these acronyms or whatever they're called or umbrella terms, the way our STEM's not, I mean, it's multiple types of jobs all over the place, but going into the sciences, what 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 would you... How would you sell it to somebody that's considering going into that type of work? Okay, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and medicine. Um, those are the overriding uh, contributors to STEM. Um, but there are so many different roles that you can have within that. And I think 
weirdly my career reflects that so I've worked in industry labs I've worked at the bench um, I have been involved in designing experiments um, when I worked in industry I was also liaising between external clients and um, the scientists that were working at the bench for them um, there are loads of opportunities I'm now a technician so I support teaching um, I've also been a research technician so um, I've got my names on my name on papers because I contributed significantly um, to some quite interesting research so there are loads and loads of different levels different opportunities different ways to be creative within science because I think quite often now people think of science as oh it's people in white coats and they put on the safety glasses and they wang about with their pipettes and um, they follow the rules and they get interesting data out at the end that nobody understands because science uses big words that you know exclude people from the conversation um, but there are different levels different ways to get into it you know um, modern apprenticeships are actually taking off quite widely in Scotland now so within our um, team at the University of Glasgow we routinely have um, apprentices that come in so they're earning while they're learning um, and I think that actually um, is is a way that we could include more GTRSB community members because you're not having to take time out and get yourself into huge amounts of debt you can learn on the job um, and I think there are different ways to think about science it's like when did I graduate 1997 don't tell anyone um so I graduated in 1997 I'm now doing my PhD so my route has been very different to a lot of people's um but I've always found it rewarding it's great fun you meet really interesting people particularly if you're dealing with clients external to your company or, or if you work in an academic setting where you know people from all over the world have walked through my lab and gone oh, that's really interesting. What's that? You know, and it, it's really fulfilling. It's different. Um, and particularly if you're from a GTRSB background, it's very different to what traditionally you would be encouraged to do. Um, but I think different doesn't make it wrong. So I would encourage anybody and, and to look at any way that you could get into that that feels right for you um because it's not all about regurgitating data or understanding you know scientific diagrams or whatever um but you know engineering that's huge that's a huge part of the day-to-day -day lives of most showmen you're putting up your putting up your shows you're taking them down you're making sure they're safe you're you know communicating with loads of different groups to make sure that the show's working um and i think it's thinking in a way that you can apply your lived experience to what you do in your scientific or medical sphere. So yeah, that was long-winded, but yeah. No, perfect. Um, last question, how can you see Epic and Science Travels or just you as this fantastic person with all these hats working together to, I don't know, bring, bring, bring awareness and about the communities, but also bring the communities and let them have the awareness of their opportunities within this. Yeah, so a lot of, well, basically everything I set up is a two-way process. So it's always about educating externally, so educating other groups, but also then raising awareness of what GTRSB community members are capable of. And I think working alongside EPIC would enable those things to become closer and to be able to um, to use our academic experience um, to affect real world change and I think that's really important um, if you can change one person's opinion or you can include one more person in a conversation or get one more person working at the bench in the lab um, then you know you've achieved a significant amount there so I think working with epic will allow us to have conversations spark ideas um and raise awareness and inclusion as we go along so win-win i just want to say thank you so much marie for um coming and speaking to me today and i'm really excited to work with you going forward and yeah just continue the conversations we have they're always fascinating it's it's a very different thing for me to hear about all these things you're doing in the lab and and, and i love it i should have went into steam I mean, not really. I mean, I never, I don't have any capacity for it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>